It's in our rural countryside and smaller villages that our traditional cultures are kept alive. And it's these areas that support local farmers who put food on our plates. But when post offices and Garda stations close, when shop fronts start being boarded up, and elderly people in these communities are left without services, we have to raise the alarm bells. Over the last few decades, many of Ireland's rural communities have experienced unprecedented declines. In this episode, we're going to explore why rural Ireland is facing these challenges and what can be done to bring people and vibrancy back to rural communities. Where we reside in relation to each other has a huge bearing on how we live, how well we thrive, and even in how long we live. We humans are social creatures. We rely on each other for trade, jobs, and social support. Even before COVID-19, it was hard to keep us apart. But Ireland is unique in that many of us live quite far apart. We in Ireland are in fact one of the most sprawled out people in all of Europe. And that's the life that I grew up in. In 1970, the year after Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, I graduated from college as a young architect and got my first job. I bought a plot of land and started building my first house 10 miles over the mountains from my family home where I was reared in a remote part of the Wicklow Mountains. I was part of the big movement of people in 1970s Ireland, known as Bungalow Bliss, who chose to build our own homes on our own isolated plots of land. I can understand the draw of the freedom to build your own house and being close to nature. This is a great place to come out to and stand and just enjoy nature. And in fact, the only civilization we had was the odd car traveling along that road over there. Here's a donkey across the valley there. I haven't heard a donkey for a long time. Back in the 1970s, there were 150,000 rural one-off homes in Ireland, primarily family farms. Since then, the number of farmsteads has dropped but the number of rural one-off houses has tripled to close to half a million. But as one-off housing continues to increase, our rural towns and villages continue to decline. To get a picture of what's going on and what this pattern means for rural communities, I'm heading to East Galway to meet Dr Maura Farrell, who teaches the Geography and Rural Sustainability Master's degree at NUI Galway. So Maura, how is rural Ireland doing? Not just here in North Galway, but generally, what's it like? Over the last number of years, um, you would have had small towns and villages like this that would have lost services and facilities. We increasingly hear about the post office or the Garda station that would have left this area. If you continue to take the economic advantage, the social, the culture out of that town and village, then it has a huge impact on the, I suppose, the future sustainability of that town. We have a very well-educated population in rural areas that would work in the main cities. And increasingly what you find with that is a lot of one-off housing developments. You find a lot of people moving out of the cities because of the expense of living in a city. So Maura, for all of those people in Ireland, you know, in rural Ireland, that are now in that situation of, say, one-off houses scattered in the countryside, what's the future for them in, say, 10, 20 years' time? 
the older population that we have in rural areas, it really is a worrying factor that they are living in these one-off houses, one-off isolated houses. We have huge transport issues within rural Ireland where you can't get people to the small towns and villages to shop, particularly older people. I do often think my own mother lives in a, a, a small area just outside the town here in Castle Blakeney. And for my mother to walk, I suppose, on a rural road, the traffic situation is quite dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. So I think if you can start to consider people living nearer within this area, walking distance of the centre of the town, I think into the future we will start to eliminate that idea of rural isolation. The one-off housing movement that started with bungalow bliss in the 1970s brought with it many unintended consequences. Ireland's unique pattern of scattered homes has made us one of the most car-dependent countries in the world. Today, the house I built in a remote part of Wicklow nearly 50 years ago lies derelict as a shattered testimony to the aspirations of my youth. This really makes me sad. It shatters a dream that I once had and that we enjoyed for a while when our my kids were small. We loved it up here. It's just a magic place. At the age of 23, having qualified as an architect the year before and the future was all ahead of me and everything looked so hopeful and this was the dream that I wished for. All shattered because I made a mistake. I decided to build a house but it was totally impractical. Too remote, too isolated, too far a distance to travel. And I see so many homes around Ireland today probably facing the same situation. There are many people living in beautiful parts of Ireland and it works because, primarily because they're farmers and they're working the land and that makes huge sense. But for people like me that have to travel to Dublin and our work was all in the city, made no sense at all. When I decided to live in Dublin, houses were affordable then. But for a lot of young people today, it's too expensive. So those people can be forced to have to go further afield. It's a pity that they couldn't find solutions to the housing without having to compromise themselves to that extent. The draw of bigger cities as well as the scattered one-off housing movement that I was part of, has helped erode the viability of our smaller towns and villages. I want to meet someone who can speak about this from the perspective of rural communities and culture. Seamus Boland is CEO of Irish Rural Link. He has spent his working life supporting and actively campaigning for rural communities. For a lot of those people that want to come back to live in their local area, why don't they live in the actual village where all the services are, where the schools are, the shops are, the football pitches, etc.? A number of reasons. From a village perspective, uh, people looking at the choice of maybe building in a village, there is a, it, the, maybe the attractiveness isn't there. Sometimes it's almost like suburban housing imposed in a rural village. If that's what you're leaving in the first place, going to do the very same thing just because it's in a village almost makes no sense. So therefore, the single house is much more attractive because at least you have space, you have freedom, you can design it the way you want, but it has its problems. And anybody who is in that situation knows that there are downsides to that kind of settlement pattern. Let's look at it from a young family's perspective right now. So you get your site and you build it. You have young kids. You're miles away from facilities. Suddenly you need two cars, sometimes more cars. If the village is already losing its shops, you may have to travel even further. As you get older, this is exacerbated. Suddenly where you live is looking more and more like a prison. I'm an architect and I do see 
mistakes being made. So I'm very aware of the problem, but what do you see as the solution? If they had a choice to live in a village properly designed, with enough space, enough green areas, access to the local shop or pub, suddenly it becomes very attractive. There's a culture in Ireland of people moving back to the region from where they're from, and one-off houses are often the easiest are the only option for many of these young families. In a search for solutions, I'm on my way to the small town of Kilsheelan in County Tipperary. The Shure River Blue Way that connects Carrigan Shure to Clonmel is exactly the sort of reason why people would want to live in this area. Brian Beck is Senior Planner of Tipperary County Council. He's been working on a new pilot initiative which could completely change the prospects for both rural housing and village life. What we're looking at and where we're standing here today is, is a site that we have planning permission for six houses. So what people would do is come in, get planning permission for the design that they want and build a house what they want. So it gives people that one-off house feeling, but within the village. And will you provide now a serviced site with roads and with you know, sewage and power, water, all of this? Yes, we will put in the road. Yes, we will put in the connectivity to the sewerage. Yes, we will put in the water. We're at the edge of the village here. The children who are going to live here can walk out onto that footpath and be in the village in three minutes or go down to the local shop uh, or for somebody to walk into the local pub or post office. Clustering can also be for older people and older people can move into their villages, build a smaller home for themselves, say a two bedroom home, but they can come back into the village, walk to the church, walk to the post office and we believe that's very important to, to try and address that rural isolation issue. We are at a crossroads and unless we do something, and we do something pretty radical, a lot of our villages will disappear. If we get the villages right, the knock-on effect of that is the pub might stay open, the shop might stay open, we might not lose a teacher in a school, we might keep the post office, we might keep the Garda station. For us in Tipperary, there's a lot of our villages, Duncan. We haven't seen a house built in 15 years in a village. Imagine if I could get five houses into some of our villages. That's five families. That's potentially 10 to 15 children going to the local school. That's a game changer. This rural service site scheme, as an alternative to one-off housing, is modelled on Tipperary County Council's pioneering design guidelines. If this was targeted at towns that have sufficient services, amenities and public transport links to our cities, it could ensure we reduce car dependency. So can these plans work? There's another community in County Tipperary that have already built a village within a village. This might give us a glimpse into what the future of rural housing could look like. The trend of building houses in isolated areas instead of within urban boundaries is eroding the viability of Ireland's towns and villages. Fifteen years ago, in Clock Jordan, North Tipperary, a group of like-minded individuals came together and established their own serviced site scheme to accommodate 55 individual homes. They named it the Clock Jordan Eco Village. Mick Ford Bradley is an architect from rural Cork who's been living in Copenhagen for the past 10 years. Now back in Ireland, he's looking to build his first home here in Clock Jordan and agreed to meet me to explain why he chose here. The village as a way of living is something we've had for millennia. And if you look at how, how our communities would have began, I mean, we began basically living in, in, in clusters. And as the village developed, you had, for example, a, a marketplace. Basically, people would come and this, this zone here was, was, a, was for many years a zone where it was, you know, five kilometers an hour. It was horse and cart. 
It was a lad in a bicycle right. before it became a place for cars. So what happened was, you know, the promise of wealth and education in the big city meant that we had to find a way of getting to the big city quickly, right? We drew two lines down the middle of our villages and we said, okay, this thing can get you to the city fast, but if you stand in it, you might die. Our villages then became unpleasant in a way. People began to say, okay, the village is rubbish. I don't like living there. I want to, I want to go out and get my own little house in the countryside because uh, ironically out there, I can get away from cars. The irony is that suddenly you're the one who needs a car. So basically our villages need to rethink their hearts. It takes itself back and it becomes places where people want to go and buy bread on a Saturday morning. It becomes the market, it becomes the place where uh, I want to go and talk to Timmy after my pint, uh, or I want to walk around and stroll on a Saturday morning. So what is it about now the village of Clock Jordan that you find really interesting for, for both you and your wife? Well, the great thing about Clock Jordan is that they have done a plan for a, a, a village here where you can come and buy a, a plot that's serviced. And have you bought this plot here? Uh, we've reserved it. So, okay. so we're in the process of trying to design, uh, myself and my wife are in the process of trying to design the, the house. Here's Julia now, my wife. Oh, right, OK. And yeah. this is Aaron and Yor, yeah, looking very happy. Right. <laughs> hello, hello. This is Julia, Duncan, hello. Duncan, nice Julia. Nice to meet you. So how do you feel about all of this? I'm uh, very optimistic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be out in the green and uh, being such a small village and right. uh, getting to know people really uh, well. I mean, the wonderful thing about building here is that we can put our own footprint on it. So we're, we're, when we're designing this thing, we're trying to think about Okay, what's it going to be in, in, in 40 years' time when the kids are gone? And, and still envisioning a life within the community here, you know? At the moment, Julia is drawing on what the vision for this house could be. It would be, yeah, like a, a, a joint project. Right. I think I'm maybe a bit more easygoing. And, and Julia, Julia, Julia changes, changes all the time, so... There's no big division down the middle of it, like no. seen on your drawing. No, we're not going to put a road down the middle, There's no. no road going to the middle of the house. <laughs> no, okay. no, no. This option of being able to build your own home within a village is quite unique in Ireland. So what did it take for this to come together? Sally Starbuck and Mick Canny are two long-term residents of the eco-village that agreed to explain what they've been doing. When we first came here, a uh, falling population, an ageing demographic, and the bank had just closed, and the post office and the schools were threatened with closure. But we still have the post office and we have two schools which are actually growing in, in uh, student numbers. So. Right, so it's been really positive for the town itself. But I'm concerned about so many people out in other parts of Ireland that aspire to doing what you can do, you know, and would like to live like you're doing here. What messages would you give to those people out there? Well, I think we've got to enable those people to live in rural Ireland. I mean, that generation of 25 to 40 year olds who are going to bring their energy and their enthusiasm to towns and villages. So what we've got to do is unlock the issues around affordability, around planning, around jobs. There's a draw to the urban centres because that there's a perception that that's where the action is. But in fact, what's been proven here in Clock Jordan is that the action can be here. The action can be anywhere. All you need is the people. Because if we're going to arrest rural depopulation and if we're going to try and solve the affordability problem and also the delivery problem in terms of the number of units that are needed, then it really has to be a very joined up approach and a very holistic approach. Back in the early 2000s, Clock Jordan, like most villages and towns in Ireland, faced abandonment. The area seen a dramatic turnaround, bolstered by the new residents, and this vibrancy has caused a renewed interest in people wanting to live in the town. Typically, Irish towns and villages expanded along the main road. And then, of course, when cars became the norm, we went further and further out along our country roads from the towns, and we formed this ribbon development, which then went miles out of the towns. But we didn't realise that we could expand our towns and villages, and Clack Jordan did that here, where they built off the main street with a pedestrian access. But then we look at all of the accommodation that's at first and second floor levels that were waiting to be used. And this town here, typically in Ireland, most of the houses 
most of the rooms above ground level are not being occupied. This is huge potential and we're going to see somebody that has done just that here in the village to this particular house. Caelan Bristow and her husband are in the middle of renovating this lovely old building, right on the main street. So Caelan, why did you particularly want to live in the town? Yeah. Why was that so important? I suppose, I mean, Nick and I, we, we wanted to live in, in a town because we like the vibrancy of a town. When I moved here from New York, my parents had just bought a little cottage about eight miles outside of Burr, and it was glorious. But, you know, after a while, you do realise that, that you need to be connecting with people more. I did feel that, that we were a bit cut off. So really? the, the thing about living here is that obviously um, we are right in the middle of the main street. And, and do you feel now that all of these upper floors yeah. could be developed like you're doing? Absolutely. That, I mean, I have potential all yeah. the way. This whole top floor was blocked off. You couldn't actually access it, so, so, so it hadn't been not touched. In, not used hadn't been all. touched. I'd, I'd say 50 years. And I mean, you're so close then to the eco yeah. village, of course. Yeah. You're just yeah. beside it. Yeah. What's interesting is I know that there's a lot of discussion about how the eco village has influenced the town, but I think it's it's mutual. You know, I think that um, there are a lot of very wonderful people in the town, whether they're from here f for generations, or people who moved here 20, 30 years ago, and some people like us have just moved here. But it's it's a wonderful mixture of, of personalities and flavors and. You know, the nice thing is, is that I've never felt such an incredible sense of community and support. Kaylin's vision of living above the shop in the village is something we see too little of in recent years. But how do the original residents of this village feel about this new influx of people? I met Seamus and Helen Costello to get the view looking out from the inside. All of this happened about 20 years ago. Would both of you have felt positively about what is happening? Not from the very beginning, Duncan. Oh, really? No, no, no. I was you very anti. You had reservations? I had reservations. I had massive fears. What was the fear? Why, what were you worried about? Fear of uh, destroying our village. Right. And the fear of it becoming a hippie village. How did you kind of change your view? We realised that what they, they wanted what we had and yeah. they wanted to nurture that and make it grow. Now they've been established in it and their children are going to school, both schools have expanded, built on. Our general social aspect is fantastic. We have so many different things like our drama group and singing groups and choirs. It's amazing for a small village that it's um, so, so active, you know. Right, now if you take other towns and villages in Tipperary, are a lot of those suffering from decay and going through a difficult time? Well, of course, I mean, there's no doubt, but a lot of the villages, the smaller villages, are in trouble. I mean, they have their post offices closing, their banks are closing, their shops are closing, their pubs are closing. In Clough Jordan, it's been quite good, and we've held onto our pubs and our post office and our shops, and we're doing really well. And that's because of this change, yeah? Of course. It has helped to bring more people in, you know. That's the secret, is, is population. And most uh, small towns in Ireland are losing their population. We're one of the very few ones that gained it. There is no doubt that how and where we've built in Ireland and the continued passion of sprawl has had a daunting impact on rural communities. But I believe rural areas can start to thrive again if there's a collective and sustainable vision to bolster our towns and villages. All local authorities are publishing revised spatial development plans over the next year, where positive local public engagement is essential. How local communities respond to these plans will shape how these communities function and grow in the years ahead. It's up to all of us to have our say.